Again, when something's bringing the moon down on top of you, I don't, no, think, I don't think you're worried I don't about think gender. You're really? Go, Does it got boobies? <laughs> That's what I need to know before I die. Do you got boobies? <laughs> no boobies? Okay. <laughs> I can die knowing now. I... Like no, no, nobody, nobody's doing that. <laughs> I'm Gamer Lynn. And we are 10, ten times 10. Now, <laughs> you missed us? Have we been gone long enough? I... <laughs> Do we not come back fast enough? I know. <laughs> I don't know. It may have been too fast. But too fast? Maybe. I mean, the way the world's going right now, I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys are keeping enough entertainment going on between news and your daily lives that. We're that small little blip that you come to check on every so often. <laughs> yes, of course. So we're here. Uh, <laughs> and we are here to bring you Eberron. Yep, we are really late to this party, but that's all right. Also, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Our Matt. Our special lovely Always. sponsor for the day. Yeah. <laughs> Always appreciate your help, Matt. Yes. All right, Matt. You can't have him. You can, yeah. We're going to do something a little bit different than what we've done in our past videos. Again, we're going to try to get to the meat of what we enjoy from the box and the pools that we got. Mm -hmm. And basically discuss the good things about the pools, bad things about the pools, and basically let you know what we like. Yep. And if you guys are wanting to see any of the other ones, there's websites, as it were. Uh, Icon of the Realms Eberron. So uh, I can provide that link in the description if you are not know, sure where to go. We're just going to, this is going to be basically just a highlight reel. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to try to pick through some of the five that we think that GMs might enjoy from the set. Uh, another five that which player characters or usual kind of like majority of players will enjoy and then let you know our top 10 that we enjoy overall. We tried to make sure that we didn't double up on too many so we definitely got a lineup of where I have 10 I picked out of there and then Becky also has her 10 she picked out of there so that way we can still get you a good idea of at least half of the pools that are out there. Yeah. We jump into it? Sure. Did you want to start from a DM's perspective or a player's perspective? Mm. Uh, we can kind of go back and forth. Sure. So definitely I pulled a uh, five from the perspective of what a GM might enjoy from this box set. And always where a GM is interesting monster. So with that said, one of the first ones I enjoyed was the Dust Hag. Now the Dust Hag is very, very nicely made up as she's got a good assessment of horns coming out from her forehead, uh, good long hair, hunchback that her hair lays across, and robes. Not too much detail. I think it gets to the point. It gets across the idea that this is a hag. To a lot of GMs, hags are very, very dangerous. And sometimes you gotta be careful which hag you use at what level and stuff like that, but Definitely, it's always good to have an option of a hag at certain points or at certain levels. And I think a dust hag definitely contributes to that. <laughs> you said to GMs it's dangerous. To players it's dangerous. Yes, to players it's dangerous, <laughs> but it's also to GMs. Because again, GMs, you know, oh, okay, most GMs don't like to TPK immediately or <laughs> like a number of times throughout the campaign. That's just not fun for anybody except for maybe the GM <laughs> I mean uh, you you okay GM you know who you are you got a, a, a tally mark on your wall how many times you're gonna TVK somebody this is this you you make a bad name for them GMs out there darn it it's your fault a hag is meant to be a good challenge and to show you how powerful sometimes certain characters can be. So that way your PCs can know whether it's good to go into a fight prepared or to think strategically when going to a fight or even in two to know when, hey, we've been bested. Time to get out of here, time to run. Do not underestimate old, little, petite looking women yes. who sell magical pies, yeah. ever. <laughs> But yeah, and, and, and that's why I like night hags and different other forms of hags. They appear to be very old, vulnerable women 
who are very powerful in magic and could turn the tides of a battle really, really fast if you're not cautious. So yeah, definitely always good to have that in the arsenal for a GM. And for Moise, Raptors! <laughs> Look, he's so cute! So these lovely little creatures can be summoned, or I believe you can just kind of have one as a pet, if, from, if I'm uh, remembering correctly, because I believe we played Eberron in the uh, Adventure, League. Adventure League. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. So uh, we actually had a, I believe it was a ranger, who actually had one as a pet and whatnot and like could like have it, it as like a little mountain and everything it was fun but these guys are lovely and if you have lots of them especially if you're able to summon them they can get ridiculous <laughs> and probably even quite annoying for a uh, gm <laughs> oh yeah i believe the raptors and other dinosaurs are native to Eberron, so that that's another beautiful thing about the world of Eberron is that they're part of the world they can be found just running around in certain areas but yeah they're also used as pets mounts yep. and possibly in combat. And encounters too yep we're gonna go to this one next the living spell cloud kill now again like we said in past videos i'm a sucker for the whole kind of ethereal energy kind of look that wizards of the coast and pazio has done with their miniatures now they give them a very magical look. This kill cloud is basically sitting on some rocks here, kind of circling around it, kind of like almost like a shape or a form that a snake would take, yeah. coiling around. Kill clouds are dangerous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, just by player characters or, you know, enemies casting them and stuff like that. And they could be very annoying, but very dangerous. So now you're take, putting it into a GM's hand that now we have a living one in which he can manipulate and control. I think, I think, I think it was in Matt's campaign in Second oh. Darkness. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was a caster that had cast this on all oh, of us yeah. Yeah. on the boat yeah. that we were on. Yeah. And it was so nasty. Yeah. So they, oh. A kill cloud or a cloud of, 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 of any kind of like poison or anything like that can really change the, the scope of a battle really, really fast and force players to either get really, really smart or get out of the way. Yeah. Smart and or creative because one spell that normally we completely ignore actually ended up saving us from this thing. Oh, yeah. Gust. Oh, I wasn't gonna spoil it. I was gonna oh, be like, okay. figure it out on your own. Oh, my bad. Becky's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I can cut it out, but nah, I was like, okay. nah. You got a free one on that one, All guys. Right. But yeah, we read the description and it was like, oh, wow, this thing can literally go out like, you know, like, oh, what was it, like 30 or 60 like miles per hour wind or something like that. I had to look it up. I'll put the actual description on the bottom. So of I so wonder, though, would that work but, on a living cloud then? So, but was, it did. Was oh, the thing. I don't think it was a living cloud though. We had oh. a cloud, a kill cloud, or, yeah. or whatever it was. But sure. this is living, so I'm pretty sure it would move it or get it. Out, but like, okay, would it be persistent? Would it still come after you? I mean, there's not a whole lot that a cloud can do against that. Like, well, especially I mean, since it's like a, it would, it would technically be an ma a magical effect. Yeah. So. But I'm I, pretty sure it still got a certain radius and. A I mean, it angle. probably can like resist like to a certain point, but or again, it's still a cloud. Like, yeah, but it's they probably living. have to be like a deck save or something. It's living. Okay. It's, it's, I mean, it's some type of sentience. I think. We, you know what? It, we'll put it out. Your GM. Yeah. Would <laughs> have to make a ruling on what, how that would work. Yeah. But because, let us know what you think too in the yeah. comments, because yeah. I, now I'm, I don't even treat. I'm gonna start reading up on it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, would would an actual sentient cloud be able to like dodge something like dodge, that? I legit feel it. like it would be some sort of deck save for said creature because yeah. it's like it's a cloud. Like it's gonna move with some wind. Like yeah, well, that's what I mean though. It's like it's still gonna get pushed back, or whatever. But I mean, yeah, I'm gonna have to look up on the stats. Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure it has a ridiculous flying speed, and it could probably just go around it. This thing is still dangerous, man. Uh, yes, I'm not, I'm not refuting that whatsoever. I just, anyways. So you pushed me, bro. Like, I'm coming back from my chain. All right, all right, all right, all right. 
Anyways, so, uh, <laughs> so I did my lovely little rafter. My next, <laughs> my next peoples, actually, technically, I guess I could do maybe like two in one, but I, because I mean, it, I kind of picked them both for the same reason. Like, oh, really? Yeah, because it was like, you don't really get like, a whole lot of dwarf characters like when it comes to like it depends on the set that's true it depends on the set from what the the sets that we have done recently yeah haven't but at I the same been. time but i like that there's especially with like the the visual aesthetics that these ones have as well like for players and whatnot just giving them like a really cool variation and look yeah like it's i it was just striking to me so this lovely guy is an artificer and the gal is a uh, mage right back to you sir okay diren the corruptor that was one that i picked too okay this is a vampire morpheus from spider-man or marvel <laughs> comics looking kind of dude with a long robe and tentacles coming out both of his arms and his legs now i liked it for one because he looks really really gothic and cool yes. this is a miniature i think you can use in a many types of campaigns especially if you have any kind of noir or uh gothic or vampiric kind of like setting to your your campaign he will probably fit right in as something very very weird and scare the pants out of your pcs hmm. and also too he exhibits another thing that's new that comes in with the everon set is which i forget the name of what this thing is called but a thing or a tentacle kind of Thing that your player characters as well can have latched onto their arms. It's really weird. Read up on it. Get the Evron book. It's cool. I imagine it could work with some type of mechanic or build that you're trying to make. Did EJ have that as I like think, a modification? I think, yeah. I think a, a, a fellow player we played with had it got an attachment yeah. like that onto himself. He got, he got all sorts of like weird like <laughs> like yeah. additions and like <laughs> let's just say this, this guy was going for he was a he was the chop shop of the campaign he was like literally the car and he just came in and like yo pimp me out honestly Get like me. anytime so like anytime some npc was like hey you want a modification yes <laughs> it was like frick Want to be my Frankenstein? Yes. <laughs> no, it was crazy too, because I was like, one of those ended up giving him like an immunity to poison and stuff like that. It was ridiculous and was so good. Like with everything that we've been going through and like our campaign with uh, with Matt and everything. Well, yeah, so you can never like, go wrong with uh, immunity oh to poison my goodness. when you deal with drow. Bro, so that was very smart. It was nuts. Like I just, I'm so, I'm so sad that his character died. We really like to figure out uh, a way to do a. Uh, 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 talk about the campaigns that we have experienced, oh but gosh. that's another that's another day, another thing. You guys, we have so many stories. <laughs> all right, we need to continue on. Okay, that's I'm all, sorry. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> okay, you'll go. We have another artificer. Most of the lovely um, thingamabobs or uh, little player characters that I was noticing were artificers, just kind of variations mm. of said <laughs> class. So I was like, oh, but. Again, like you don't have to use it as an artificer, obviously. So if you wanted to go for, uh, actually, I was thinking about your inspector guy. Oh, he <laughs> would be a good miniature for you. Right? Yeah. So I'm like, and your your class wasn't artificer, right? My class was a mixture between a uh, bard, uh, a, a knowledge bill bard, mm -hmm. and uh, I forget what type of, I think a knowledge cleric. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like you played sort of like an investigator yeah. type person. So again, it's like use our imagination. This, this is what what this is for, yeah. as it were. But uh, but yes, I was like, oh great, costume change. Actually, I think that's what it really, what all of this really is for me is just like <laughs> costume changes for characters. Yes, and these were my favorite ones. <laughs> so yes, and you can never go wrong with a lovely like Indiana Jones hat and a cane. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> that's why that's immediately what I thought of when I saw that miniature. Too. I was like, dude, that looks like an Indiana Jones. Uh huh. Uh, weird. Only just thing like was all like, in black. Like my only problem with this too is like it looks like is that like a wand he's holding or so it looks like or... an actual cane because it bends. 
ends here. Oh, okay. So yeah, so it cane. looks like one of those like actual cane type things. So yeah, I was thinking Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. and then like looking at that cane thing, even though he's holding it almost like it's a wand. I was almost thinking like maybe if you're doing a Harry Potter kind of thing. Oh, that's true. That is true. You so you could do something, something like, like that. that. I was even thinking like Sherlock Holmes, like cane gun. Like, oh yeah. You know what I mean? This is another toughie, but I'm gonna go next with Lady Vol. Now Lady Vol. Oh. is very, very beautiful. Yes. With her very gold and blue aesthetic. Her face mask, I don't know what you would call it kind of thing that she has on her. I don't know. It almost feels like there's a mask or some type of a helm integrated with her head because she has tendril stuff coming off her head that you don't know. Is it a part of her head? Is it a part of a helmet? Hmm. Is it just all fused together? These very withered and wrought out and holy wings that she has coming in kind of like encasing around her a little bit yeah and just yeah she just looks like she's has a stance of just flowing this like she's just about to cast something and drop it on you hmm. if not the big bad uh definitely one of the big bads that you will probably have to contend with if you're running a campaign in the world and for that I almost want to say she got my top spot for GM picks. Ah. She she should be on air, a lot of GM's top picks, or even to have a heavy consideration for being involved in the campaign for either being the main boss or maybe a, a mid boss. I actually can't even say she's a mid boss because she's so hard to contend with unless you're running a very high fantasy game. But again, that's up to you. I just definitely say in the world of Evron, it's very hard to overlook her. Mine is not quite as fancy. Not the costume change. Uh, <laughs> but this one is a uh, Kalashtar. Kal Kalashtar? Kalashtar. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I still could be wrong with that too. I just. That's, that sounds a lot better than what probably is really how you pronounce it. Kalashtar. Uh, costume changes. More costume changes. Good stuff. <laughs> Prettiness. Everybody likes pink. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um, last but not least. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh, cadaver collector. Dude. No matter what, I need more of these in, like, different worlds or different settings. Cause I, the idea of this thing and the lore around it and everything about it is to me awesome. I think they could have went even further to flesh out some details and stuff, but I think just the imagery of this thing gets the message across. And from what I remember right, this thing just walks battlefields of just humongous fields of death, collecting these things on its back. And I don't know whether it was, I remember if it was to the purpose to help clean the battlefield of dead corpses, or it was in the midst of the battle and just so happened these things got flung in the air or stabbed to it. But either way, that's just, that's, whoa. Like that, that, that contributes to the story and the lore of Ebron and how bad this world is, but at the same time too, how bad the wars get in this world. They gotta have a cleanup crew. They gotta have a cleanup crew. Just looking at it, it gets the idea across. And for that, it's a winner for me. So how would you utilize that as a GM? Um, again, wars happen on many fronts, whether you're using the Ebron setting. Uh, you know, I think the Ebron setting starts off to where the war has ended and it's supposed to be a time of peace, even though they are could possibly be on the verge of a new war. And that's up to your GM or the campaign idea if it does go into that way. But other worlds have wars too. And this could be something that could be introduced or even then maybe, you know, the big bad is researching a Warforged concept like this thing. Or maybe this is a relic left behind in a dungeon somewhere that's just walking around aimlessly without a master or any commands, but it still is what it is. There's so many ways you can go with something like this to where it doesn't have to be tied to Evron. You so can, you would use it as more of like a passive thing? Kind of like, like a passive thing, either as a concept... Passive world, world building thing? Yeah, world building okay. thing. Either a concept of a dungeon or a villain 
a mad scientist villain or something like that, uh-huh. or, or a relic, or even in maybe a gatekeeper. There's so many ideas that you can use such a thing with. All right, all right, all right. And even then, probably ideas I'm not even, I haven't thought of or, you know, explaining. Well, um, for uh, my picks for my players and everything like that, this is my party. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, yeah, that does look like a an adventuring party. <laughs> I won't say an exactly even party. No, 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 no. But, no. but a I party mean, what party actually starts out even? Like, <laughs> uh, I think most either most start off even with like a decent amount of builds that go in different directions. If you like talk or to that, each other beforehand, or that party becomes that. <laughs> yes, because y'all missing something, and, and it and, shows, and, and it shows, yeah. and people start dying uh-huh. and then people come back as like yeah we forgot to get a cleric or some of y'all ain't played a cleric and it shows or <laughs> man we sure needed a tank for that last one boy let me come back as a barbarian yeah real really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it happens all the time that's our GM and player picks from hey. the set we elaborated very much and even went off of kilter a little bit there I'll but, but now hopefully we can focus for this last bit which is going to be our top 10 so i picked five becky picked five and this is just encompassing the whole set of what we enjoyed oh yeah you need there you go thank you i'll start okay look guys bug oh. uh, <laughs> so uh, I'm not introducing these in any particular order, uh, <laughs> mostly because I don't really have one. Um, but, um, so, yeah, this guy, I think we pulled three of these, but, oh my goodness, this lovely thing. I'm gonna pronounce this wrong and I apologize. An Enkeg, I'm right. pretty sure. This thing looks so realistic, it looks like it's about to like crawl onto the table and like bite somebody, but it's great. I love it. It's fantastic. It looks like it is coming, emerging from the ground, and ready to uh, ambush and whatnot, which is probably what these things do, honestly. It looks like it burrows and whatnot coming up from the ground, just like those stupid spiders in the kingdoms of Amalur, and <laughs> I, uh, I won't oh, go what there. She, well, she's been playing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yes, uh, it's great, and I love the paint job on it and everything like that, and again, like the details are fantastic and amazing and creepy. So, very effective. I agree with that one too. I, I feel like out of the whole set of everything I've seen, well, it's like the most detailed. That's got most detail, the most love. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go ahead and start off light because one, I have a little bone to pick, a little bit. So I'm gonna start off with the number one out of the set, which is Warforge. Oh. So one, uh, definitely one of my favorites because again, this is a new available player race. Uh, two. They're very essential to the world of Ebron. If you're gonna talk about Ebron, you probably can't do it without talking about the Warforge. Mm -hmm. My bone to pick with this set a little bit is a lot of there's a lot of player character choices coming out of this set, which I think is a lot more than what we've seen in past sets, especially what we covered on the channel. Yes. Mm -hmm. My biggest problem is though, is that for such an essential new race, I think could have did a little bit more to contribute to this new race as far as either you know i i mean I, they didn't do bad because there's two iterations of this warforge where it's one where they're holding a the sword and then i think another one where they're holding a, a war mace mm -hmm. but much like you'll probably see uh, in this what did happen with this box set was there was a lot of different forms of the shifter which is which i understand was and the probably artificer. And an artificer, yeah. which was a very responsible choice because there is a lot of different forms to the shifters, therefore making a shifter have a lot of different roles that a shifter can play. But I think you could have did the same with the Warforge, just a little bit. Maybe just either two more, maybe three at the most more options. But that's my bone to pick with that. But definitely, I love the way the Warforge looks. I feel like I probably, I mean, I don't think I really need to talk about Mr. Tentacle Man uh, again. <laughs> Dern the Corrupter, sorry, you have a name. Uh, <laughs> since we already kind of talked about him. So, we're gonna talk about this little guy. Cause he's creepy and weird and cool and looks like a bunch of water. He is a, ahem, <clears throat> Hashalak Quarry? A 
what a what? H a s h a l a q q u o r i. Yeah, I'm not going to try to. Yep. Uh, so nope. <laughs> we're watching Avatar, and it oh, yeah. made me think of a spirit in the spirit world. So you know. I know. It's pretty and ethereal and beautiful and lovely and I like water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll take that as cue for me to jump in. Okay. <laughs> All right. My next one is going to be the changeling. So kind of like my problem with the Warforge, I wish there was more changeling kind of miniatures because, again, this is another new race that you're introducing into Dungeons and & Dragons and via Evron book. And I think they could have been shown a little bit more love with kind of the different roles that they can take on. Because even in 2, this one doesn't necessarily seem like it takes on a role mm. other than what it is. Which is fine, because I think, still, it gets the point across of what it is. Where it has, I think if you look into the book, there's a picture of this person. And it seems like he's in the middle of changing mm. either to the person that he's trying to mimic or copy. Or changing back to himself. And it gets that aesthetic across of change. Or costume changes. <laughs> I guess that's what I'm, I'm, I'm griping about. More, more options, more costume changes for PC characters. But this is a cool aesthetic, and I liked it. Yeah. All righty. I guess I will talk about this guy. He's cool. He's like got all the vines and things, and he's like, I'll mess you up. Bruh. And at first I thought up here was like its brain being like all exposed and stuff But Lynn was saying it's probably just like muck because it looks like it's kind of running down his you know So someone probably hit him with a mud ball and he's not happy so. Or it's just, it's <laughs> to help get that aesthetic of yeah, it's where his face would be maybe mm -hmm. I don't know But yeah, I don't know for some reason like if I were a GM I almost feel like I would want to have that same sort of like thing where there was like a little person like inside of him like controlling it Instead of it like being its own thing, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that would work because I think with monsters like that, what yeah. they do is they hide in swamps underneath, kind of like almost so like a person probably wouldn't. Survive. And then when they rise up, it's like a swamp thing kind of yeah. rising up. And I can imagine that's probably what the muck is. is yeah. that's, oh, that's, surprise! Surprise! As yeah. it come up, and it's my face. Right. Probably. Or how I sense you, or where that I sense you from. That's actually very true, huh? But yeah, this thing is really cool, and like the textures are awesome, the colors are awesome, like just oh man. I love how solid it is. That's it a is, hefty miniature. It is very. It's a beautiful for boy. Uh, <laughs> so yes, this is my my other one. All right, I'm going to go to this one. Sadly, cause I'm me personally, I love gray renders. I've used them before in my campaigns a couple of times. And they are just monstrosities to be reckoned with. Like, if you're not familiar with Grey Renders, the closest thing I could probably relate them to is the monsters, or the the monster in the beginning of Hellboy. If you need kind of like, cause it almost looks similar to it, minus the whole tentacle uh, mane around it. Ah. If you just cut all that off or shaved it down and stuff like that, this is probably what you would get. Man, they're deadly. They are. They are mean, they are fighters, and this mini miniature displays that power that it has with its nice muscular tones and definition on it. This maw that's just huge with its set of eyes that rolls to the side, and just, oh man, just the details into the knuckles and the hands. It's just really, this thing, you can just see how this thing is gonna tear into something. And even then too, even if it don't kill you, with his darkened teeth and nails, it just makes you feel like if you survive an encounter with this thing, you're probably gonna need to go get treated for infections and stuff. Disease. Yeah, because it just looks so nasty. My last one is a horse. It's not a unicorn. I totally thought it was a unicorn because it's so shiny. But it's great. It's got these lovely little freckled white beauty marks and what oh my gosh this thing does have a beauty mark and it's like a little shiny like it's little a beauty mole. mark it's yeah it's a shiny little mole on its butt that's great oh my gosh i didn't even notice that until just now it's great okay it's not on this one it's like on a side but still uh, <laughs> and it's got like this great like goatee looking thing right here and just like the <laughs> the frill <laughs> by the hooves 
and everything and it stands and even it's like look to the side and everything is just so sassy and it's the greatest thing and I love it so much <laughs> and I have no idea where this thing would be used but it's a um Valinar Holes. See even like the name is just like very like stuck up and just I'm like high I'm elf, read them like... up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to read up on them because it almost sounds like is this something common in the world? Is this like a, a uni like finding a unicorn in this world? This guy this, this horse is like the high elf of horses. Like this <laughs> it is just so pretentious looking and it's great and I love it. I am living for it. It's amazing. Like I almost <laughs> feel like and this is probably just like totally wrong. But I almost feel like if a drow wasn't riding a spider or oh, a drider, he'd probably be riding this thing. Right this thing. <laughs> All right, so that left me with two that I need to do real quick. Um, one. Did I? Yeah, could you? Oh, yeah. that's right, because I got my bad. Mm. Lord of the Blades. Now, oh. I think some more work should have went into this miniature. I don't know how so or because there's probably so much detail that has to be done on a miniature like this if you're going to be true to its size mm. which makes me think too it's like maybe this needs to be a creature that should be larger i have a feeling like this creature would have been larger that's what i was thinking too honestly yeah. especially for something called lord of the blades. blades like i would expect it to be at least like but i mean I don't know. again that doesn't mean anything cause, at again, least this... at least huge i think but it's just, I don't know. Or maybe large. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would think large. Large, yeah. But definitely because of how small it is and how much detail that probably has to go into this yeah. miniature, uh, it suffers for it. But it does not deflate still what it is. And this is basically a miniature and a creature that is covered in blades. That no matter what you do, whether you win or lose, you're not coming out of that battle unscathed or uncut. And again, another thing that I like about it, because it almost has like a heavy armor samurai look to it, which again, I'm a sucker for uh, zombies, samurais, and basically those two. Um, <laughs> and this has kind of both of those things to it. So I was definitely going to be a sucker for it. And very much like Eastern aesthetics. Yes. Yes. But yeah, um, he's definitely cool for that. And then the probably the top pick, and I should go without saying this is number forty-four out of forty-four. So this is the top one. The cream of the crop. The cream of the crop is so Cates. Yeah, I think that's Cates. Sul. I feel like it's Sul. Oh yeah, Sul Cates. Sul Cates. Which. It's basically this big go ethereal looking caster encased in some type of blue or black flame. And everything about this thing, again, the whole translucent ethereal look all around, except for the the, sh the shaft of the staff. But the orb at the top has that. And he's just looking like the end boss to any and every campaign that is like, dude, I'm a cast. And I'm gonna bring the moon down on top of it. Is Sula a dude? I'm pretty sure he should be. I mean, it could be either or. It's covered up enough, and again, when something's bringing the moon down on top of you, I don't, no, think, I don't think you're worried I don't about think gender. You're really? Go, Does it got boobies? <laughs> That's what I need to know before I die. Do you got boobies? <laughs> no boobies? Okay. <laughs> I can die knowing now. I... Like, no. No, nobody's, nobody's doing that. I was like, look, bro, nobody cares. Yeah. I, just want, I just don't want to die. I just don't want to die. <laughs> but yeah, very beautiful miniature. Again, has that look of just like, if your GM pulled that out on the table, it's like, oh, so the campaign's ending tonight. I know, really? Today's the day, huh? Well, um, those are our, those are our picks. Yep. I feel like I have to remind my app now. Don't worry, we'll do close-up shots and I'm in the midst of it, so, yeah. you know, we do our usual thing. Um, hopefully you guys like this format. I thought the format would probably be shorter. No, kind of and then video. I started talking, I'm But then sorry. we started just talking. It's my fault. Which, you know, hopefully you enjoy. I can't focus on anything. <laughs> I would definitely say that my takeaway from this set is this is probably essential or a must-have for GMs to get. Because, again, I think it's a good enough assortment to give you options as far as 
common to not common things that your player characters will run into despite whatever campaign you run into but also too gives a GM player character options just in case if you have a player that needs a miniature that helps to represent them yes. especially if they're playing a race from the Everon set which is very possible now because again a lot of the player races are very popular mm -hmm. from this campaign yes if you're a player character you could probably skip out on this one again you'll probably get something cool but unless it's something like a Warforge or Shifter or Artificer that you're trying to get and it's a certain aesthetic that you've seen and know that is in the set, mm -hmm. um, I don't know what else is there for you. Oh yeah, if you're uh, wanting to get super duper specific and yeah. whatnot, like to try and get to closer to what you are envisioning for your character, then Hero Forge is a great option. Yeah, great option because uh, the option. problem here is is just there's a nice aesthetic for artificers and shifters, but if you're trying to get what I was, I was at first trying to get or pull more of war forges mm -hmm. or uh, changelings or even Kalistars, even though Kalistars is just a human looking kind of miniature too, hmm. and a lot of them could fall into that skate, there's not much else really. Yeah. Other than, you know, again, tools that a GM will use, or if you're a back and forth kind of GM and player, mm -hmm. then. Yeah, but it's not a bad set. It's not at all. Like I said, there's too many cool things here to have. There are certain things that could have been worked on a little bit better. Maybe some things that could have been shifted around with mm -hmm. this set. But I think overall as it is, it's still good. It's really great for GMs and somewhat good for players. Yeah. That is our takeaway. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. Uh, again, if you like the video, make sure to click the like button. I'm not gonna entertain no dislikes. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, please hit subscribe if you're not subscribed to us uh, and whatnot. There's actually a lot of you who have uh, come over to our yeah. channel and uh, uh, one, thank you for all of the new people who are here. Welcome. Um, also, uh, those of you who, who have not subscribed, please do so that you can come and hang out with us more. We'd love to see more of you. Until next time, I'm Game Rebecca. I'm Gamer Lynn. And we want you to keep it 100. 100. I did. Yes, you did. Yeah. I'm gonna go die now. <laughs> Oh, you got the bandage on. She, I, gave, she gave blood, y'all. Well, she didn't donate blood. She I wish blood it taken. was. Yeah, I wish it was donation. I had, to, you know, medical stuff and whatever. It's boring. Anyways, goodbye. <laughs>